Hello, I'm John Ryuta, Product Development Manager for Binoculars, Spotting Scopes, Microscopes, and Elements Outdoor Electronics at Celestron. We here at Celestron have been receiving a number of questions about microscopes recently. Most commonly, questions regarding the difference between compound microscopes and stereo microscopes. Now, there are a number of differences between these two instruments. They both have their uses, and used properly, they can provide excellent results for a number of different applications. However, you have to make sure that you're choosing the correct one for the needs that you have for it. Now, to begin with, the stereo microscope. The stereo microscope, such as our Celestron Labs S1060, can be identified easily by the fact that it has two eyepieces. Now, there are compound microscopes that have two, three, and in some cases of clinical microscopes, even multiple sets of eyepieces. But for the general purpose, a stereo microscope will always have two eyepieces. And the reason for that is because of the word stereo. The stereo microscope, or stereoscope as it's often described, sometimes also referred to as a dissecting microscope, features an eyepiece that connects directly to an individual objective lens. And so each eye looking through the eyepieces sees its own perspective through its own respective objective lens. You have two eyepieces, you have two objective lenses, and so when you're looking at an object under view, you're actually seeing it from two different angles. And that gives you a three-dimensional image of the object. Now, of course, if you were looking at extraordinarily small objects, for instance, things that you'd mount on a slide, that wouldn't really provide much use because your field of, or your depth of field rather, would be very, very shallow. And so three-dimensional viewing wouldn't be that interesting. However, for larger objects, such as are commonly viewed with stereo microscopes or stereoscopes, you're looking at something that's actually large enough to hold in your hand, to hold and to place on the stage directly. So what would you look at? Well, for instance, you would look at rocks or flowers, fossils, perhaps coins, stamps, um, industrial pieces. Uh, these are often used in inspecting industrial components. They tend to also be very low in magnification. So this particular one ranges between 10 magnification and 60 magnification. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I want a microscope that only provides that limited amount of magnification? Well, it's because you're actually looking at something that's a bit larger than a specimen on a microscope slide. You're looking at something that you could see individually with your unaided eye, but you want a much better look at it, a much closer look. So for instance, in a, a fossil, say, say you were looking at a fossilized shark tooth. If you were looking at such a tooth, you'd want to know what the edge of the tooth looked like. You'd want to know perhaps what the markings on the tooth. Did it have any wear patterns? These are the types of things that are very useful for stereo microscopes. Also, coin collectors, for example. Coin collectors may wish to see if there's any minute damage on a particular coin's face because that could change the value. Stamp collectors might wish to see printing errors or small differences in colors. Botanists may look, wish to look at some part of a flower that they couldn't easily see unless it was somewhat magnified, but not over magnified so that they couldn't see the entire piece that they were interested in. Stereoscopes also have an advantage in that they can have greater viewing distances. So you'll notice this has quite a large distance between the objective and the viewing platform. Uh, they also often have viewing heads that can be rotated completely around. So for instance, in those paleontology applications that I was speaking about just a moment ago, you can rotate the head completely around so that if you have a large fossil, perhaps a leg bone of a dinosaur, you could actually position it over the entire bone to see just exactly what the markings on that fossil might have been. Was it some type of a dinosaur that perhaps had been eaten by a Tyrannosaurus rex and there were still teeth marks on the bone? The stereoscope would be what you would want to be able to see those little details. Right. Now, compound microscopes, also often called biological microscopes, they tend to have the more traditional microscope shape. You'll notice the multiple objectives that rotate around. This happens to be our Celestron Labs 1000 series. 
Now, this happens to be a monocular microscope. So you have one eyepiece looking through one objective lens that's engaged at any given time. Now, it doesn't give you the stereoscopic view of a stereoscope, but what it does give you is much, much higher levels of magnification. So if you rotate through the objective lenses, you'll find there's one at four magnification, there's one at 10, there's one at 40. And so when you combine those with the eyepiece, this particular eyepiece happens to be a 25 magnification. You multiply the eyepiece by the objective lens and that gives you your magnification. Celestron offers compound microscopes that have magnifications going up to 2000 power. So what do you do with that? Well, of course, what you do with that is you look at things that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to see at all, perhaps, unless they were mounted on a slide and the slide was positioned on the stage and then adjusted in. You'll also notice that the distance between the objective lens and the stage on a compound microscope is much closer. That's because you have a very shallow depth of focus. You're getting a very narrow slice of an extraordinarily small specimen. But what you're able to see from that is truly astonishing. You can get details of cells. Uh, for instance, you could see a drop of blood, but with a compound microscope, you could see the individual red blood cells in that drop of blood. So not particularly for things like a coin or a stamp that you could actually hold in your hand, outstanding for anything that you have a sample of that you want to get a very, very detailed, specific view of what is in that particular sample. So for a compound microscope, you would find these in laboratories, in medical offices, veterinary offices. Uh, you would find this in anything that's trying to determine cellular structure. Uh, and that includes botany because you can look at plant cells under this level of magnification. Uh, these are also excellent for uh, a recreational pastime called pond dipping. You use a very specialized slide. They're easy to find. Um, they're called reservoir slides. And instead of being a flat piece of glass, they have a slight depression. So if you were to go out to your local pond, you could take a little bit of water you find there, drop it into that little depression, put it on the stage, look at it, and you can find all the little creatures such as rotifers and daphnia, and tardigrades, which everyone seems to be enjoying, uh, in that particular drop of water. That's really the basics of it. Now, before I end, there are compound microscopes that have more than one eyepiece. They look somewhat like this. They will have two eyepieces, but that is not a stereoscope. If it has the little rotational objective lenses and it has two eyepieces, that is a stereo compound microscope but we'll save that for another time. I'm John Riuta for Dear Celestron. Thank you so much. Happy viewing.